1913, an Italian futurist artist by the name of Luigi Rizzolo wrote in his manifesto that the Industrial Revolution had given man a greater capacity to appreciate complex sounds. Over a hundred years later, I did sound for someone bashing a microphone against a trash can through 17 different effects pedals in a co-op basement. Let's unpack that. Noise is defined as a sound, especially a loud one, that is unpleasant or that causes disturbances. At face value, that seems pretty straightforward. How do we make music from noise? Or a more appropriate question might be, how do we make art from it? We can roughly define noise as a genre, as the use of noise for artistic expression in a musical context. It can be made acoustically or electronically. It can be random or sampled from existing sources. Depending on who you talk to, anything unintended for a musical context and then recontextualized as music can be considered to be noise music, like a burning piano or animal skulls being crushed in a bowl. Luigi Rizzolo is often credited as the first noise artist, constructing concertos of siren-like devices that he made called Intonaru Mor- in into Naru Mori, into in in that. Much to the chagrin of his audience, which appeared to be the point, challenging what he would describe as the complacent, uncomplicated, carefully curated notions of music. Unfortunately, none of these devices have survived the passage of time. You can kind of thank Hitler for that. But here is an approximation of what they sounded like. Musician and noise historian Paul Hagarty would contend that the first noise piece proper was a piece by experimental composer John Cage. His work 433, written in 1952, consisted of three different movements where the musicians would go up on stage with their instruments and play nothing. Live performances of the piece would leave the audience bewildered or amused and even sometimes angry that John Cage was mocking the tradition of concerts, or even mocking the very idea of music. Cage would give some insight into his aims by saying that they missed the point. There's no such thing as silence. What they thought was silence, because they didn't know how to listen, was full of accidental sounds. You could hear the wind stirring outside during the first movement. During the second, raindrops began patterning on the roof. And during the third, the people themselves made all kinds of interesting sounds as they talked or walked out. So there's no such thing as silence. Not really. Similar to a Rorschach test, where we begin imagining things out of seemingly nothing. Noise for noise's sake. Something that can't possibly be evaluated within our market system. Almost as if the entire point of it is that it can't be assigned a value. Alongside the noise movement was also something called drone which was what it sounds like. Very minimalistic music with single tones and rare changes in notes or rhythmic structure. Lou Reed would cite drone music as an inspiration for his 1975 double EP, Metal Machine Music, which was an hour long, sometimes slog of feedback, modulated guitar noises with no discernible melodies or rhythmic structure opting instead to create one giant, cacophonous, seemingly impenetrable wall of sound. This was probably the first commercial release of a noise album, and it didn't go over well. Critics panned it as being, well, a giant cacophonous wall of sound, and that it added nothing of value to contemporary music. Q Magazine even featured it on its list of 50 worst albums of all time. Modern critique of the album has been somewhat better, Modern noise artists would see the album as being invaluable to helping create the current noise scene as it is. And there are plenty more influential artists and albums that I am I just don't have time to mention right now. If the history of noise is something that you're interested in, I'll leave uh, some links in the description for you to do some further reading. The noise genre would go on to inspire lots of derivative genres. 
Noise rock and no wave will both go on to incorporate elements of noise in their genres, recontextualize them in a rock and punk setting, even offering deconstructions of their parent genres, featuring loud, grating guitars, bombastic percussion, and even atonal orchestration. These genres will go on to influence modern bands like Sonic Youth and Swans, though it would still remain not commercially viable, but that kind of feels like the point. Industrial will go on to offer an abrasive and grating fusion of rock and electronic music, loud, aggressive synths reformatted into furious punk rock fashion, where vocals are equally likely to be bubblegum pop or just guttural nonsense. The prototype of the industrial genre would go on to inspire bands like Nine Inch Nails, Ministry, Fear Factory. The noise genre wouldn't just be limited to the United States or the UK either. In the late 1970s in Japan, bands like Merzbaus, and Hijo Kaiden would achieve moderate notoriety. You could call this phenomenon Japanoise, but it seems unfair to those artists to really lump them in just based on geographical location. You might be thinking to yourself, well, that's all well and good, but where should I start? What's something accessible, but still kind of gnarly? Well, my personal favorite noise-inspired piece of art is probably Everywhere at the End of Time by The Caretaker, which you may very well have heard of depending on how deep you like to go down YouTube rabbit holes. This six and a half hour long project is a visceral dive into the stages of dementia as represented through music, with stage one sounding like fairly normal big band music from the 1930s, each track getting slowly distorted over the course of six hours into something unrecognizable and terrifying until the very core of your being feels like a synapse ready to decay from its mortal coil. As you spiral downwards, you start to realize that there is no bottom. There never has been, there never will be. Gasping for air, you press your ear against the door to the abyss, only to hear it quietly sobbing. So yeah, 10 out of 10. So if you're just getting started and coming from a fairly contemporary rock background, you can start with bands like Sonic Youth or Melt Banana, Mets or Deerhoof. You hell, you could even call Nirvana's In Utero album as having noise elements. Health, Death Grips, Nine Inch Nails, Skinny Puppy if you're feeling more of the electronic vibe. Maybe you want to go with something a little bit more gnarly than that even. You could try Village Oblivia, a track by Wolf Eyes, or the live version of Do You Doubt Me Traitor by Lingua Ignota. Or Summer in My Veins is a great album by I Am a Lake of Burning Orchids. Maybe you just want to dive right in. You could try the Metal Machine music album mentioned before by Lou Reed. Or Pure Misanthropia by Stahlach. Or if you're feeling especially brave, you could try Saint Anger by Metallica. I can also guarantee you that there's someone in your local music scene making noise music or music with noise elements in it. Playing in a grimy basement, looping feedback through dense oceans of reverb perhaps dressed as a trash can. Show them some love. By the time you're watching this, I might have made a playlist. Um, if I haven't, bug me in the comments about that. Now noise music isn't for everyone, and that's okay. It's not really designed for everyone. That's kind of the point. Even the people I talk to who are into it say that they rarely revisit a noise piece more than a couple of times. And I have yet to hear of anyone who says that it falls into their casual listening. It's not exactly the kind of thing that you go running to. Luigi Rizzolo said in The Art of Noises, At first, the art of music sought purity, limpidity, and sweetness of sound. Then different sounds were amalgamated, care being taken, however, to caress the ear with gentle harmonies. Today music, as it becomes continually more complicated, strives to amalgamate the more dissonant, strange, and harsh sounds. I think he was onto something. With the advent of increasingly loud, abrasive, energetic music that defies tradition, things like hyperpop and increasingly aggressive genres of metal, experimental hip-hop, noise rock, dubstep even, I do wonder if those things are in any way close to what he had had envisioned. But I do understand the appeal of noise music proper, a visceral reconnection with our primal senses, like a good scare in a movie or a video game, a questioning about our perceptions of music and art, all sounds are just wiggly air after all. What makes this dispersion of energy any more valid than the next? Cool things often come out of strange and sometimes terrifying places. Innovation comes from questioning the norms. We were given five senses. Why not push them to the limit? And that'll do it for me today. If you liked this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. 
hit the bell if you want to get notified next time we upload.